The Arduino development environment can do nothing. And what better alternative I'm using? I will show you after the intro. The Arduino development environment can do nothing. And that's a good thing. Because this development environment was meant to keep the entry barrier into microcontroller development as simple as possible and not to overwhelm the newbie. Well, I admit I'm a professional developer and I'm missing some features in the Arduino development environment that make programming more fun for me. Platform IO is a free tool, especially for working with microcontroller systems like ESPs or Arduino. It is installed as a plugin in the Visual Studio Code Editor, VS Code for short, which is also free. So, by working with VS Code, we have a very powerful development environment that offers many more features than the Arduino IDE. By the way, Visual Studio Code is not to be confused with Visual Studio without the code, the big software development platform. I think these very similar names are a bit of an unfortunate choice. We will now install VS Code. Then I will show you how to install the platform I.O. extension in VS Code. And parallel to my video where I compare Arduinos and ESPs, I will show how to use platform I.O. to load a program on an Arduino and on an ESP. Okay, first of all, download VS Code for your operating system. The link is in the description below. I would recommend the stable version of VS Code. To install Platform IO, we go to the Extensions section, sort of an app store for VS Code, Add-ons. There we search for the official Platform IO extension, click install and wait for the installation to be finished. Recommendations may pop up that you should install additional recommended add-ons. These are add-ons for the C++ C++ programming language. Since the Arduino framework uses C++, the installation makes sense. So now we create a first project in Platform I.O. for the Arduino Uno board. For this, we go to the Platform I.O. homepage in VS Code and then click on New Project. In the form, we choose a project name, select the Arduino Uno as a board and Arduino as framework. For location, I always leave the default value. This is the easiest for now. If you move the mouse over the question mark, the default location is shown. For me, this is my user folder documents platform IO projects. Click OK and the new empty project will be created. In Platform I.O. the projects are structured a little bit different than in the Arduino development environment. Let's have a look at the folder structure of the empty project. We can neglect the folder test for now. You only need it if you want to work with unit tests. SRC for source contains all source code files. Here is also our main Dot .cpp file. Include can be used to store header files here and lib is used to store project specific libraries. The platform io.ini is the configuration file for platform io projects, but we will get back to that one later. For now, we are only interested in the src, the source folder, because this is where the main cpp is located, which we will now open with a double click. Platform IO already fills the main CPP with the bare setup and loop methods. Furthermore, we have to include the Arduino.h library at the top. In the Arduino development environment, this happens automatically in the background. But Platform IO fills in this line for us. I'm including the same code here that I used in my video Arduino versus ESP. A feature comparison. Now let's take a look at these little but important buttons down here to the left. These are the buttons that go with Platform IO. The house icon opens the Platform IO homepage in VS Code. The checkmark icon checks the current code for errors. The arrow icon also checks the code, and if no error is found, it loads the current code onto the board. So this will be our main upload button. The trash icon deletes any compiled libraries. 
these would then be recompiled on the next check or upload. And this is how you can force a recompilation of your whole project. The plug icon opens the serial console and the last icon opens a shell if you want to enter platform IO or shell commands manually. The two areas on the far left are only interesting for git and version control. And this button in between shows errors and warnings and presents them in a clickable list so you can quickly move to a specific error in the code. At the bottom right, this is the position of the cursor and here you can set the size and type of indentation in the code. If you change this value, you should execute a format document afterwards. To do so, right click in the source code and select format document. Well, now we know how to upload the code, then let's do it. The code is compiled and uploaded and we should see our LED blinking. Yay! Now we repeat the whole thing with an ESP32. Before I remove the Arduino now, let's go to the Devices section of Platform I.O. Here all boards are shown which Platform I.O. has discovered. My Arduino Uno is always shown as DEF CU USB modem 14101. Now we connect the ESP32 and click Refresh. Two new USB ports appear in the list of devices. Don't ask me why there are two, but I know that dev cu slap underscore USB to UART is the correct port for the ESP32. These two ports will be a problem in a moment. That's why I will show you how to deal with it. Now we create a new project first. We choose a project name and as board I take the generic Espressive ESP32 DEF module. If you're using a different board that is listed right here, then of course I would take that. As framework we take Arduino again, of course. We open the main CPP and copy our blinky code into it. Click on upload and we get an error. In the error message you can see what happened. Platform I.O. tried to upload the code to this USB port, but this is the wrong port. Platform I.O. doesn't know which of the two ports is the right one and of course takes the wrong one. But we can solve this problem with the project settings. Go to the projects section of Platform I.O., find the right project in the list and click on configure. You should see a tab called ESP32 Dev we need to add an option called Upload Port. To do this, I type the word Port in the field at New Option. Platform I.O. presents a list of all options with the word Port. I choose Upload Port. A new field Upload Port is added and the cursor jumps to this new field. And now we can just click into this new one and we get a list with all USB ports as we have already seen in the Devices section. Here we select the dev cu slap underscore usb to uart port and, very important, click on save in the upper right corner. I always forget this one. Under Windows this will be a COM port. There you have to watch the devices list before and after connecting the boards. And by the way, if the devices list does not change after connecting a new device, try to restart VS Code. After a restart, the new device should be listed. If we upload our code now, everything should work because we told Platform IO to always use this port dev cu slab underscore USB to UART when we click upload. Platform IO sticks to the proper coding standards while the Arduino IDE has taken some of the work off of us. Adding the arduino.h header file, for example, is one such case. Another important point is the declaration of functions. Let's take the code from the loop section, put it into a function and call this new function name in the loop section instead. Now once we trigger the code check, we get an error. The problem is that our new function has not been declared yet. In C, C++ you have to declare functions as sort of registering that this function even exists. In the Arduino IDE this was not a problem because there it automatically looked for functions in the main file and declared them for us under the hood. 
if you still want to work with only one main CPP, there are two easy ways. Either declare the functions correctly before using them. To do this, just take the function name, including the return value and parameters, and write it once in the top section before using the function. Or move setup and loop to the very end in the code below all function definitions. The code of the function itself is the function definition. Registering a function before using it for the first time is the function declaration. Now, of course, the legitimate question, why do we actually do this if the Arduino IDE makes it more comfortable for us? My experience is, when a project reaches a certain size or complexity, working with the Arduino IDE becomes very confusing. As soon as several functions or custom classes over several files are added, it is no fun working in the Arduino IDE any longer. Here are a few helpful tools that the Arduino IDE does not have at the moment. IntelliSense. Well, where exactly IntelliSense starts and stops is still not clear to me. For me, these are the helpful suggestions when I start typing a command or function name and also the parameter suggestions that are displayed to me. Also the function descriptions. Go to declaration and definition. You can right click on a function and go directly to a function with go to definition or go to declaration. This also works with variables. And go to references lists all usages of a function or variable. Peak does basically the same but does not leave the current file. Instead it shows a little preview window at the cursor's position. Rename symbol. Rename symbol is very useful if you are not satisfied with a variable or function name. All declarations, definitions and also calls can be changed in one go. In other development environments this is called refactoring. And one last tip how to get your function descriptions display with IntelliSense. If you provide a documentation for a function with certain keywords and a certain syntax, then these are displayed in the IntelliSense pop-ups you can see if you hover with the mouse over a function name. The whole thing works according to a standard called Doxygen. I put a link to further Doxygen keywords in the list at the description below. Hey, this is my clumsy attempt to remind you of liking the video. If you found valuable information or just feel entertained the right way, please give the video a thumbs up and even better, if you subscribe to my channel, I do get the right indicators so that I know I did a good job. Thank you. All right, and this brings us to the end of this platform I.O. intro tutorial. We have installed Visual Studio Code and the platform I.O. extension. We have looked at the project structure and take a look over a few important differences from the Arduino development environment. We looked at how to use platform I.O.'s project settings to fix upload issues with the USB ports. We did a quick blinky test with an Arduino and an ESP32 board and in the end we learned about helpful features of Platform I.O. that make programming much easier. I hope you could convince, no, I could convince one or the other of Platform I.O. Have fun, tinker around, stay healthy, bye.